So the fourth problem in centralized finance is centralized control. So how does DeFi deal with that? So there is centralized control in almost all of traditional uh, finance. So at the very highest level, it is a central bank or a government that controls the money supply. And then if you go down uh, a few levels, you've got these giant firms that are exerting uh, basically a market power over things like banking, insurance, and the exchange uh, of assets. But when we start with the centralized government institutions, they hold effective monopoly power over things like inflation. And I know that the link to inflation and central banks uh, is somewhat controversial, but I don't think there's any controversy for those countries that have had to experience a hyperinflation, that central banks can create inflation if there's excessive printing of money. So decentralized finance is obviously decentralized. That's the, the name, decentralized. So the control is not by centralized players, but by essentially open protocols that are transparent and people understand them and they also understand that they're uh, immutable. So, so again, the stakeholders get to interact with these algorithms. Um, there could be a parameter that controls the inflation or the deflation, as I mentioned earlier, and this is built in to the decentralized finance uh, DAP. So it's also the case that some of these apps are less decentralized than we might want. Okay, so um, it might be that the application's got some special privileges for an administrator. Okay, so that, that means that it's not completely decentralized. But, and this is important, anybody can see that. So we know, we know that that administrator has got that privilege. And any user can basically take that smart contract and redo it, fork it, to a situation where you don't have that centralized uh, control. Okay, so, so it often is the case very early on, the uh, administrators or the, uh, the developers uh, retain control for a short period of time, and then they transition to a fully decentralized uh, application. And that's very common, but what I'm talking about is something that's been out there a while, there's no plan to go decentralized. If it's a good idea, then we can just take it, fork it, and make it uh, decentralized. So this idea of forking, again, is a very, very powerful idea. Um, if there's a problem, if we don't like the centralized control, if there is some flaw, or if there's just something that could be done better, it's easy to grab the code, fix the code, and relaunch and it would be a new application that solves the actual uh, problem. So again, this is really difficult to have an analogy in centralized finance. You're using some interface, you're using the bank's interface, and you think, oh, well, this would be much better if we could do X, Y, and Z. Well, think about how difficult that actually is to do for the bank. There are probably tens of thousands of lines of code, ancient code, that is really difficult to change. Whereas in this space, it's really easy. Again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You take what's there and improve upon it.
Okay, and this is the beauty of, cent of decentralized uh, finance. So with the bank, it's centralized. There's a long bureaucracy that you need to check the box off to get that uh, improvement in the bank offered software. Whereas in decentralized finance, anybody can do it. And there's a lot of opportunity when you do that. So what about the trade-offs? So this, this set of courses is not just about the opportunities, it's about the risks. So for example, in centralized finance, um, in, or anything centralized, if there is a crisis, you can act very quickly. You don't need to go and get consensus amongst the uh, stakeholders. However, the disadvantage of this, it might be an overreaction. So uh, again, uh, we'll talk about this later on. Uh, a lot of this has to do with what the optimal governance is for a decentralized uh, application. And we don't really know. And different protocols have different governance mechanisms. And the way I see it, we'll figure out what the best mechanism is, and then other protocols will adopt it. It is early on. But the key thing is that we've got security, we've got transparency, uh, and it's very easy uh, to do these changes. So again, let me go back to this idea of decentralized autonomous organization. And that's really what we're talking about here. So we've got um, essentially Think of a protocol as uh, it's got a number of stakeholders, not in the traditional sense, not in the board of directors sense or, uh, or the management sense. You've got people that are invested in the governance. And, uh, and this is a decentralized organization. They don't need to reside in the same location, but they provide some sort of mechanism whereby if a change needs to be made, it needs to go through the governance uh, protocol. So governance, very important, and we will deal with that uh, later in this learning experience.